What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Dauntless Outdoors. Today's episode, we're diving on Naples, Florida. The goal of today's episode is to shoot Kubera and Black Grouper. That's just a, a hopefully we bump into those. And mainly African Pompano, Cobia, and Permit, just in case uh, you didn't know, there's towers off the coast of Florida, and that's where we're headed to. So, this is our little setup. It is 817, 818 on Thursday, January 19th. This is our little setup. Sleep in there. We got Colin over in the bathroom. He's in the restroom. And uh, seems like it's going to be a pretty calm night. It's uh, not too bad. So, going to get to bed. I'll catch you guys in the morning when we're at our first spot. So, see you on the water. What's going on, y'all? This here is a clip of me diving the tower. This is about my third or fourth dive on this tower. Did a couple short drops, not seeing much, and I decided it was time to go a little bit deeper. The viz was honestly pretty horrible for how far we were out. We were probably 80, 90 miles out, and we had maybe 20 foot of viz. So I passed a mangrove snapper there because I saw a little bit bigger one below him. So I follow him, take the shot, I know it's a good holding shot, but typically on these towers, if you let your fish go free, it'll either get eaten by a goliath group or a shark, or it'll wrap up in the tower. So, shot the fish, and I didn't give it any line, which is why you can see that I'm going like one and a half mile an hour towards the surface. So, fight this fish all the way up to the surface. Ended up landing him. Pretty nice fish. I mean, I knew I had a really good holding shot, so it wasn't too bad. First fish of the day. All right, so I landed that fish and now I'm headed back down. I cut this clip pretty short just because it's not that fun to watch me swim through the water. So, sitting down here on this uh, little tripod looking thing the top of the, the tower where it splits so it's in here i think i'm about 80 foot down and a couple nice permit roll through wasn't going to take the shot but i decided <laughs> you know what, why not took it completely stoned this fish um i think this is one of my first permit that i've actually stoned so pretty happy about that and that was the end of this day it was cut pretty short just because we spun a prop and, and lost it so now I'm back in my area I think I'm up in St. Pete and headed down to the bottom this first dive here is about 100, 110 foot deep so I get down here looking around unfortunately right before this I shot like a 80, 90 pound cobia and my shaft completely snapped in half so that was pretty unfortunate. I was pretty sad about that one. So now I'm looking around for that fish, which is why I'm basically at the bottom here. But unfortunately, I never saw it again. And of course, I don't have footage of it. My GoPro died. So I know that's what they all say excuses. But <coughs> while I was down here, spotted a pretty nice mangrove. Took the shot and uh, I was planning on just letting him go up under there just because I didn't want him to get eaten by a shark so shot him and left him so now I'm headed back down and as you can see that fish basically bled out and died so didn't have to deal with getting the fish free and he didn't really get tangled up I just have a shaft down here it is stuck so get down here I think I'm at 115 foot right now and pull my knife out cut the line that's holding it in place and as you can tell I'm sinking a good bit <laughs> but a ton of ages and stuff I did go back down and shoot those right after this dive but that's for a different video so got a pretty nice mangrove I typically whenever I cut my shaft free like that I like to bring it up with me just so it doesn't get tangled back up again. So, yeah, nice fish. So that was the end of that day. I shot a ton of AJs and stuff, which I'm not including in the same video. 
but now I'm at a different spot and as you can see pretty big Kubera on the bottom middle of the screen I'll look back down at him again here in a sec right there but unfortunately he wouldn't come even anywhere near me he was, he was really smart and he had some good viz on this day so didn't get a shot off on him but I did see a nice AP so I decided I was going to follow that but I was about 95 foot deep here and followed him for a while but he didn't get me a shot so I decided I was going to call it for this dive so I headed back up to the surface and as soon as I got there rebreathed knew I had a, another chance at this fish so I get down here about 95 foot again and as soon as I turn up big Kubera he's probably about 15 20 pounds but again really smart fish wouldn't give me a shot so unfortunately didn't get the shot on him so pretty sad about that one but that was the end of that day shot a ton of AJ's and stuff which I'm gonna do a huge footage compilation of those things I've got probably an hour of footage of those so now I'm at a different spot different day and I'm about 85 foot deep here as you can tell Kind of nice APs, well, not giants, but decent ones. And I took the shot on the biggest one, and then ended up having a nice holding shot. So let the fish run, and back to the surface. So that was it for that day. And now I am in, I think, 85 to the bottom here. Some pretty bad viz, as you can tell. Get down here. Spot a pretty nice mangrove snapper right there. Decided I was going to take the shot. Wasn't seeing many AJs. This was a commercial trip, so. Took the shot. Completely stoned him. And typically, if you shoot, it'll attract more attention, more commotion. And as you can tell, there's a couple decent AJs, but nothing really worth shooting there so got my nice snapper there no AJ's that was it for that day and now I am in I think 120 foot to the bottom 125 foot to the bottom and as you can tell pretty nice American red snapper there headed down in the water column typically never see him up this shallow where I'm at this is about 60 foot dive and it was the only one I saw this day that was this shallow took the shot and uh, knew it was a really good holding shot kept uh, kept a lot of tension on this fish but just in case I wanted to free up that line tangent there that rarely ever happens but wanted to free it up even though I was just swimming the fish up to the surface just in case you know a shark grabs it whatever happens you don't want to be tied to that fish so got that first AR, he's a pretty big one, and um, I knew there'd be more of them if there was one that high up in the water column, so decided I was going to do an, another dive here, going pretty deep, there's a ton of AJs and stuff, but I rarely get the chance to shoot at these things, so I decided I was going to go down here and take some shots on those, took that one, completely stunned that fish, and brought him up to me I didn't want any chance of a goliath grabbing him or whatnot so grab the fish and head on up to the surface I think that dive was about 100 foot not too deep but definitely down there So I landed that AR and I decided why not keep diving for him. So headed back down here and on this dive I wasn't seeing any of them. I was sitting right above this wreck here. I think I got to 117 foot on this dive but I look up spot a pretty nice mangrove in that school there. So I decided I was going to take the shot on him. And if you couldn't tell I am shooting my brother's gun, the Orca. This is by far the best gun I've ever shot. Super nice gun. I ordered one after the first time using it, so definitely worth it.
but landed a nice holding shot. Stoned him in to the surface. So I shot that fish and kept going down. There was plenty more fish to be had, so just headed down to the bottom. And a lot of times with American Red Snapper, they won't actually be on the wreck. They'll be out in the sand around the wreck. It's something grouper like to do a lot as well. So I figured that's what, where they would be is just a little bit farther off. And spotted a few of them out there in the sand. So I decided I was going to swim out to them. Line up on one that was the biggest. Take the shot. I've got a really good holding shot. I know it's not going to pull. But... At this point, I'm pretty tired from swimming down here and fighting all these fish back up to the surface. So I gave it a little bit of line, which definitely shouldn't have done. If you listen close enough, you can hear me let me line out. And that's where I made my, my mistake, was letting him take line. I really shouldn't have done that, but... Oh well, it happens. So get to the surface, and I'll start to pull these fish up, and you'll be able to see what happens. So, So that last dive was at 111 foot, and it was a minute 50, just to give you a, an idea of how those dives were going. So, as you can tell, I had a throw flash on this one. I hadn't thrown one yet, and typically it works really well with snapper. So I decided it would be a, a good idea to throw one and follow it down. And as you can tell, there's a mutton snapper right there. That was the closest he was going to get, but... Unfortunately, that shark somehow bent my shaft a little bit up, so I missed that fish. So I got to the surface, straightened that shaft out on my knee. So it's not exactly perfect, but it's a little bit better than it was before. So through a throw flasher, and I'm headed back down to the bottom. What I'll typically do is I'll let that flasher sink until I can't see it anymore, or until I can tell it's really deep and then I'll start heading down and I'll typically not like grab it if I'm seeing a bunch of fish around it so I'll let it sink a little bit more just because they're wondering what it is but I grab it do a little bit of grunting and a nice snapper swims up to me decided it was time to take the shot I took it completely stunned that fish now I'm headed back up to the surface learned from my mistake on the last dive well two dives ago that I had the, uh, the shark eat that fish, so I decided I was going to pull this fish up to the surface with me. So, nice one. so now I'm headed back down to the bottom. This is all in the same wreck. Um, and as you can tell, this wreck is really fishy. Um, put it back down, and the viz isn't great, it's getting a little bit worse and the current's picking up, so I decided uh, I was going to take a shot on this mutton here, I think it's probably the same one that I shot at earlier, but, I mean, obviously it could be a completely different one, but it's about the same size, took a pretty far shot there, but I knew it was holding shot, so I decided I was going to fight this fish all the way to the surface, he was laying on my nose, and I definitely would have got shark. So, grab my line, put them up to the surface, and got a pretty nice one. So at this point, the current's pretty strong and it was harder to stay on this spot now so did one final last dive up to the jug swam all the way up there went down and as you can tell a bunch of nice snapper and stuff but 
they wouldn't want to get too close because once the current picks up they really like to stay a bit deeper just so they don't have to swim as far back down to the as you can tell, pretty far from the boat. Justin is right there, but that was the end of that day. And now, as you can tell, pretty nice Kobe right there. Drake shot it, and as you see, he's got a holding shot, but Troy takes a backup shot on this fish and decided it wasn't worth my time to take another shot. So, pretty nice Kobe right there. Cobia ended up being about 45 pounds. So I'm sitting here with a loaded gun, and as you can tell, a bunch of sharks start swimming up to the commotion. So, as a good dive buddy, what you're supposed to do is keep an eye out. So, go down here, try and poke off these sharks. We're down in Venice on this trip. So, pretty sharp down there. But as you can tell, a bunch of bulls swimming around, and I'd like to keep them not too close to the diver. Scared them off, but now I'm back in my area. This is a 150 foot wreck. Fizz is really good, as you could tell. And typically, don't shoot at these guys, but they're yellow jacks. And I asked Drake if he wanted them because he could sell them, so he said sure. Lined up on the first one, tried to get a shot through the first one to the second one, but unfortunately missed. I'm not exactly sure how I did, but I did. But landed the biggest one out of school, so not bad. So now I'm doing a little bit deeper of diving, shot some AJs and stuff, and now it was time to head down and hopefully find some nice fish. Drake had told me he just saw some APs, so get down here, spot a couple of them. They still have the little tassels hanging off, so they're not too big. There was one in the back of that school that was pretty nice, but... I decided I wasn't going to chase him too hard. You can see that wreck there with how good that fizz is. But let them go back towards the wreck. And I decided I was just going to do another dive and hopefully get a shot on that school. But as you'll, come, as you'll see, as I'm coming up, there's a big school of them. Right past the AJ school. Right there. Huge school of APs. Probably 100, 110 of them. So I decided it wasn't that big of a deal that I passed. So now I'm headed back down towards the bottom. This is, I think, a 115 foot dive here. Get down here, looking around, and as you'll see, as soon as I turn up, I see the school of APs, and what I do is I look away from them, do a little bit of grunting, because typically the fish can tell if you are looking at them, and they don't really like that. So as soon as I look back at them, they all start to turn away from me. And I spot the biggest one in the school right there. And then I had to take the shot, took it, and as you can see, the shaft went all the way through him, stoned him, and the floppers even open. But go to pull on this fish, and the shaft pulls right out. So I was pretty mad about that, and I thought this fish was just going to sink to the bottom. And I was pretty sad that I wasted that fish, but get to the surface. Somehow I lost the clip. But Drake heads down and puts another shot in that fish. So ended up landing that guy and now I'm headed back down to the bottom. I decided I would uh show you the whole whole footage of this dive. Going back down to I think 120 on this dive. 100, 117, 120, something like that. But headed down here. It's a longer dive. Well, not too long. I think it was only a minute and 40. But for hunting blue water, you don't typically push past that. So, <clears throat> headed down here. I'm seeing some nice bait and stuff. So, I figured it would be pretty hot still. And you'll see here in a second. Spot a couple mutton out there in the sand. So, I knew they'd stick around for a while. But look up and there's the whole school of them so many of them and spot the biggest one in the school i was gonna go for a two shot but decided the big one was a little bit more worth it took the shot and completely stunned that fish i have a different shaft on on this dive because last dive got to the surface and 
a barracuda bit through my line and shaft sunk to 150 foot, so wasn't getting that one back. But <laughs> ended up landing this one, didn't have the, the shaft pulled back through. So pretty happy about that. I think he was about a 15, 20 pounder. Not a giant, but definitely not a bad one. So I landed that fish, did one more dive after that, and wasn't seeing any APs. So I decided it was time to go after those mutton. And as you can tell, there's a couple of them sitting around. And I decided this one was going to give me the best shot, so I zeroed in on him. He was the closest right there. Took the shot, completely stunned that fish, and got a nice mutton. Just in case you were wondering, this is about a month's worth of diving. Maybe a little bit more of just game fish. There's a lot of AJs that are in this clip, but we've got some nice fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.